Hi kids, today we are going to rename fractions and mixed numbers. A mixed number is a number represented by a whole number and a fraction. Why don't you go ahead and take notes in your math journal as we go along. Go ahead and write down what you're learning about today and write down the definition of a mixed number. Pause the video, take a moment and do that. Okay, now that you've done that, let's get an example of a mixed number. And we are familiar with looking at mixed numbers. 2 and 3 6 is a mixed number, for example, because 2 is the whole number and 3 6 is the fraction. When we put this together, we call it a mixed number. Let's work on a word problem using the fraction 2 and 3 6. Let's look at this word problem. Mrs. Clemens has two and three six loaves of cornbread. Each loaf was cut into one sixth size pieces. If she has 14 people over for dinner, is there enough bread for each person to have one piece? So let's look and see what we are going to have to do in order to be able to solve the problem. And remember, the question that we are looking to answer is, is there enough bread for each person to have one piece? That is the question that we are looking to answer. The information that we need to help us, we're definitely going to have to use the fraction 2 and 3 6 and we're gonna I'm sorry the mixed number 2 and 3 6 and we're gonna have to use the fraction 1 6 in order to be able to solve we have to figure out how many 1 6 size pieces are in 2 and 3 6 so in order to do that we need to write 2 and 3 6 as a fraction and to do that, we are going to break apart the mixed number. 2 and 3 6, we are going to take it from a mixed number to a fraction. And we're going to break it apart. We're going to separate the whole number 2 from the fraction 3 6. So essentially, we are going to be looking at 2 and 3 6 like this. We are saying that it's going to equal 1 plus 1, 1 whole plus one whole plus three six. So we're taking the mixed number and we are starting to break it apart. So we can see that this one whole plus this one whole is essentially how this two came to be. And then three six is this fraction here on its own. So we're looking at those fractional pieces of three six and we're separating it from the whole. Now, the next thing that we need to do is look at our denominator. Our denominator is 6. This helps us understand how we can use fractions to make these two wholes. So this one whole, if we put into a fractional component, keeping in mind that our denominator is 6, we can now say that this two and 3 6 can also look like this equals 6 6 so we can have 6 over 6 that's 6 6 that is this one that we're saying this 6 6 is this one whole because that does equal one whole plus another 6 6 and that would be this whole plus our fraction 3 6 and we just keep that the same so now that we have written 2 and 3 6 as a sum of fractions remember we have already been working on writing fractions as sums now we've taken this mixed number and we've written it as a sum of fractions we can continue with our work and now we can see how many one six size pieces are in two and three six because that's what we were focusing on trying to figure out how many one six size pieces was in 
2 and 3 6. Now we simply just need to add 6 plus 6 plus 3. And that will give us 15 as our numerator. And we don't need to do anything to our denominator except for just keep it the same. Keep it the same. When the denominators are the same, we keep them the same. We don't need to change anything with the denominators. So we are saying that there are 15 sixths, one sixth size pieces. So now I can answer this question. Is there enough bread for each person to have one piece? And remember, the size of the pieces are one sixth size pieces. And if there are 15 six size pieces and there are 14 people over for dinner, then I do have enough bread for 14 people to have one piece. There are 15 six size pieces in two and three six. So there is enough bread for 14 people to have one piece. Make sure that you are taking good notes in your journals so you can follow along with how we are changing mixed numbers into fractions. Now let's try another example where we're going to be using fractions greater than one. Now, again, go ahead and write this portion down in your journal as well. Numerator larger than the denominator. That's when a fraction is greater than one. And we are going to use this next word problem as an example and solve a problem using a fraction greater than one. So go ahead and pause the video so that you can write down what a fraction greater than one means in your notes. This example actually is going to be an opposite example of the first problem that we solved. When we were working on the renaming the mixed number as a fraction, we got our mixed number 2 and 3 6 and we changed it into a fraction and this fraction that we changed it to is a fraction greater than 1. 15 6 is a fraction greater than 1 because the numerator is larger than the denominator and 15 6 represents more than just one whole. This is more than one whole. This is two holes and then 3 6. When we're going to work on this new problem, we are going to work in the opposite direction and we're going to use a fraction greater than 1 and we're going to rename that fraction greater than 1 as a mixed number. So let's get started. To weave a bracelet, Kelsey needs seven pieces of brown thread. Each piece of thread must be one-third yard long. How much thread should she buy to weave the bracelet? So remember, we are going to solve for this problem focusing on this question. How much thread should she buy to weave the bracelet? That's what we're going to focus on. We know that she has seven pieces of brown thread. She's going to need seven pieces of brown thread. And this is how long each of those pieces are going to be a third. So we need to write 7 thirds as a mixed number. So to begin this process, we need to first write 7 thirds as a sum of unit fractions. So all we did to get 7 thirds was take 7 pieces of thread that's going to be a third yard long, which gives us 7 thirds when we put those together. 7 plus a third is 7 thirds. So we're writing 7 thirds as unit fractions. And we remember this from our work in class, that unit fractions always, always have a numerator of 1. And that is why they are called unit fractions. So we need to write 7 thirds as a sum of unit fractions. So go ahead and continue this part. Pause the video and go ahead and get all of your thirds written out to equal 7 thirds. Now that you have all of your thirds written out, we can see that 7 thirds written as a unit fraction looks like this. We're keeping in mind that we're trying to figure out how much thread she should buy to weave the bracelet. That's our focus. So now what we're going to do is figure out how many holes there are in 7 thirds and how many thirds will be left over in order to write this as a mixed number. So we're going to say that we are counting thirds to get one hole. 
So we're going to use the information that we have in our units to get one whole. So one third, one third, and one third will make three thirds. Okay, so this all those thirds together make three thirds, and they equal one whole. Then one third, one third, and one third again added together gives us another three thirds, which also equals one whole. And then we can see that we just have this one third left over. That's the third that we have left over. And we are going to show that 7 thirds equals 1 whole plus another whole plus a third. And we're showing this process to show how we're going to change this to a mixed number. And now all we need to do is put our holes together. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then we have the third that's left over. And we have successfully changed this into a mixed number as well as answer this question. How much thread should she buy to weave the bracelet? And we're going to now be able to answer the question for how much thread Kelsey is going to need. Kelsey should buy two and one third yards of thread. Make sure that you have taken great notes. Make sure that you remember to write your whisk in your journal as well. And don't forget to log into Edmodo and let me know that you have watched the video. See you in class.